Oh, I wanted to talk about this actually. This is what I wanted to kind of end the show on. So this is a segment on outtake from an interview that Kanye did with Tucker Carlson on Fox News that I'm sure a lot of you have kind of already seen or heard about. And I guess Vice somehow managed to acquire or get their hands on some of the outtakes from that interview where he basically went off on one and said some maybe what people would deem to be quote unquote crazy things. And in this particular snippet, he speaks about his relationship with Virgil and how his death affected him and whatnot. And I think this might be the first time we've actually heard Kanye speak at length about Virgil in any kind of way. Because one thing that really, I guess, as a fan of Virgil and as somebody who kind of had the opportunity to work with him for a very, very short period of time in my previous workplace and somebody who was really kind of you know, weirdly affected by his passing, even though, again, like I said, I didn't know him that well, not not well enough to be upset by someone's passing, but I guess because I kind of was somebody that sort of like looked up to him and kind of found him really inspiring and motivating and aspirational in terms of the stuff that he was doing um, from afar, it was kind of, it kind of felt like it was a personal loss because I kind of was you know, a friend of his from afar, right? Do you know what I mean? I kind of had this uh, parasocial relationship with the dude because I was always on his Instagram and whatnot. So it was always weird to me when he did pass that you didn't really hear anything from Kanye about it. Like he didn't really speak publicly about it or tri pay tribute to the guy. There were some passing comments here and there, but considering what Virgil meant to Kanye and what Kanye meant to Virgil, you just didn't, you didn't feel like that was the appropriate way to maybe honor your friend i don't know maybe it's not me to say that because it's their friendship but it just felt weird at the time why it didn't happen then of course many years progress and then you know kanye and tremaine have that argument and tremaine basically airs out and says what he says about kanye not being invited to the funeral and then suddenly things start to kind of make sense about the you know the friction that they had maybe because of the Louis Vuitton job or just because of the industry stuff whatever it may be it maybe led me to believe that maybe they weren't always on the best of terms anyway so whatever v kind of impression that they kind of gave to the world or the fact that Virgil basically was always kind of very politically correct and didn't really say anything out loud maybe led us to believe things and maybe fill in the blanks that weren't really there but really behind the scenes they weren't really as cool as they probably uh, made it seem but I thought Kanye's comments about Virgil here were really interesting overall um, some of them a little bit disrespectful um, and not really something you'd want to say when you're trying to honor your friend's legacy but again I think just to kind of gain some insight into what's kind of really going on behind the scenes with these people because I you know it's all it's it's definitely been eye-opening for me these last weeks to kind of see that nothing has really changed in the scene I kind of took a step back actively from being a participant in it and kind of just viewed it as a customer and as a fan from afar but it's it's kind of weird to see that nothing has really changed everyone's kind of the same people are stabbing each other in the back um People are holding secrets over people, and uh, you know. And if you do do something they don't like, they're gonna air you out. People are smashing each other's flipping boyfriends and girlfriends and stuff behind each other's backs. People are jealous of people because of jobs that they got. They're bad minding you. They're doing this. It's all all the stuff that I knew was happening, but it's kind of we are wild to see it at that level. Right? I was doing it. it was, I see it in my kind of lowly level, at my sort of like protein studios level. But it's mad to see it happening at this level, right? At the kind of LVMH flipping you know, Paris Fashion Week, um, Kardashian, Kanye level. That's probably nuts to see. But this is anyways a video, a clip, um, Kanye on Virgil, um, an outtake from the Tucker Carlson interview that I'm going to play now. At the end of the day, we all know we have to answer to God. Now, some of us in desperate times may grab a little bit too much of the Hennessy. I'll be specific. Arno, shout out. Thank you for making the Hennessy, it's delicious. That's, that's an LVMH company. I'm kind of very much so in, in beefing with them right now because they killed my best friend, Virgil. Uh, How did they kill Virgil? They, first of all, they hired him. Um, well, do you want the, uh, you want the, I'm gonna try to like give you the abbreviated story? Yeah. Okay, so, Virgil was hired as my assistant, and he ended up becoming one of my best friends because we traveled everywhere. We traveled to Japan, we interned in Italy at Fendi because we weren't accepted in Paris, and we started to gain momentum in the design world, and then Virgil did his own line called Off-White, uh, and then I stopped doing the Kanye West line, I started doing the Yeezy line, and I did a, a licensing deal. I had a licensing deal with, 
with um, Adidas. I mean, we still have that deal. And we did this fashion show that was the, um, the, it was like the most seen fashion show in history. So Bernardo Noe, the head of LVMH, asked to meet with me. And he offered me a deal. But with the deal, they had to have ownership because they're colonizers. Uh, they, they're not there to just, hey, we're going to give you support and, you know, you do the best thing you can. They, all, the, all these people, a lot of the VCs and a lot of these kind of companies, they have to have ownership. And Louis Vuitton have presented themselves in such a way to have so much real estate where a black man's dream come true would be to have that level of support from a company because then we can go back into the neighborhood in our pink Cadillac, metaphorically. Yeah. Now, the pink Cadillac was literally invented for that. Do, like, Google that. I don't spill. We don't have enough time to talk about it right here. The, um, the Cadillac, that specifically called it pink, is just like... So, um, all of my design team wanted to work with Louis Vuitton. So, Bernard Arnault shook my hand, said we're going to do the Kanye West deal at Louis Vuitton. And I was actually going to give him the lion's share, which, God, thank God, I didn't. Three months later, they dropped the deal at the board. The next collection uh, I do, season two, we don't have anyone to support it because I had to have Adidas indemnify the collection. The third collection, we're there. Uh, Virgil's working with me. He's got his line, but he's my main employee, and he's um, running the Donda uh, design group and he's bringing in Heron Preston and Matt Williams is working with me and we have our, our crew um, and we do this show at MSG and it's like a big hit. Uh, season four, I, uh, I did a show and it started late and I was really depressed about that. Then a week later, Kim got robbed in Paris. Then I, I just tell Scooter after I finish his like Scooter Braun, was my manager at that time. I said, after I finish this leg of the tour, I need to, uh, I need to, I need to just take a rest. I need to go to Japan. I love it in Japan. And they, um, Scooter's like, no, you have to do more touring. And four days into that tour, I was exhausted. I screamed from stage. I would have voted for Trump. This stuff. I was like, it's also from everything at that time. Like. The fashion show, my wife getting robbed, all these people telling me I couldn't say anything about Trump. Uh, it was just a lot. And I ended up in the hospital. And I just, to, just to pause it there quickly, I find it interesting how the question was about Virgil and why he thinks LVMH are the cause of his death, which is an absolute insane you know, claim to put out there, but it is what it is. And he spends the entire time just talking about himself talking about his career, talking about his struggles, talking about his tri tribulations, talking about, you know, the things he has to overcome, talking about his inspirations, what the, all this sort of stuff. And it's like, this is maybe the perfect kind of summation of maybe what's wrong with modern day Kanye. He's unable to kind of take a step back and see things for how they actually are. Because in this story, he's, he's the victim, but he's also the victor, which is really strange. He kind of does that thing that the Kardashians do a lot of times, right? Where they want to be looked at as these kind of like, um, what they call them again? They want to be looked at as these, uh, as these girl bosses, right? Like they work hard, they work out a lot, they, 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 their diet's on point, they're always in the office, on their laptop, answering emails, going to the factory and doing this and doing that and doing whatever it may be. But then you also can't comment on their appearance because they're victims, because they're, you know, they're women and because, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover, all this sort of nonsense. So they want to be the, the bosses of all bosses, but then they also want to be able to pull out or to stand behind the victim narrative because it suits their needs. And Kanye is the same thing. He's the kind of reincarnation of every great artist that's ever lived. But on the other part as well, he's also being controlled by these kind of invisible forces that are kind of trying to push him to the brink of suicide or something. You can't be a bully and a victim at the same time. You kind of have to choose one. And for him, he just kind of keeps dancing between the both of the things at the same time. And again, this question was about Virgil. 
You know what I mean? Why do you think LVMH drove Virgil to death? And he hasn't really been able to explain it. He's, if anything, he's explaining why LVMH might be responsible for him if he ends up passing away, God forbid. But do you know what I mean? He's not really explaining the Virgil thing. And why I bring this up is because as a Kanye fan and as a real big fan of Virgil too and their friendship and their whole extended teams, the Matthew Williams, the Heron Preston, the Justin Saunders obviously got drowned. Tremaine is also part of that group. I, I like what they did right as a team. I think it was pretty amazing to see out from afar. It was cool to see somebody like Virgil being announced as the flipping mentor director of flipping Louis Vuitton. I remember watching and reading that news for the first time, seeing that video interview with him and Naomi Campbell, where he's still trying to process that whole thing, seeing his first Instagram stories where he was going to the flipping Louis Vuitton offices and going up in that lift and taking pictures of himself and playing around in the studio and, you know, setting up the decks and stuff and seeing all the old Mark Jacobs shit in there all that stuff was super inspiring and again it's never really ever been a question to me about the quality of the clothes it's always more so about the person they're doing it looks like you has come from the same scene as you has got a loads of friends in common as you is also doing this amazing thing so it can only it can only inspire you it can only make you feel optimistic about the future that oh if i work hard in the thing that i'm doing i can maybe achieve a level of greatness a level of achievement that i could never ever envision before and it's all because somebody's gave you a little sprinkle of inspiration so when terrain came out with that claim that Kanye wasn't invited to the private funeral, which we didn't knew about, right? It was only something they knew about behind the scenes. It was never shared with us, with anybody, of, with the fans or anything. So when we found out that Virgil's supposed best friend wasn't invited to his private funeral and also wasn't allowed to talk at the public funeral, it kind of made you think, whoa, what the flip is going on? Because usually in funerals, when stuff like that happens, other family members or close friends will step in and say, hey, I know you, you guys fell out, but honestly, we need to honour this guy's wishes or honour this girl's wishes. Let's let the person speak. But I guess at the time of his death, they were not on good terms at all to the point where the family were like, no, nah, you're not speaking, which is flipping crazy. So that, that kind of claim still hasn't, I don't think, correctly been answered. And if anything, that basically, his lack of answer basically proves that you know, Kanye is like a terrible person. He's maybe a great artist and stuff, but as a friend and anything else personable, he's, or anything that involves a personal relationship, he might be the worst. He legitimately might be the worst because he still hasn't explained to us why he thinks that LVMH has killed him. I wear that badge every conversation. I can be, you know, put down for that. Oh, and also last point. He keeps talking about this thing about LVMH or about um, uh, Bernard Arnault shaking his head and saying, hey, I'm going to give you this licensing deal. I'm going to put money behind your brand or whatever it may be. Why does he not think that they just maybe decided to just change direction because they just felt maybe Kanye wasn't brand aligned or maybe they felt like he might have another freak out and kind of put them into a sticky position? Or maybe, um, you know, things in the business just change. Why does it, it always have to be some big conspiracy? That's what I don't understand. And then also he kind of fails to link or to basically think about what happened in those three months. Because he says, oh, he, he shook hands with Bernardo. No, here I'm going to do this deal with you. And then three months later, the deal got killed at the board level when they went to approve it. But he never mentions what happened in those three month period. Did he have a freak out? Was he involved in some public spat that would have put his name into, you know, in the mud and whatnot? What happened in those three months? I'm sure that would have affected these really prim, proper, you know, Parisian dudes who are behind kind of making those big decisions at flipping LVMH. You'd imagine so, right? Or whoever these executives are. But he doesn't really think about that in the slightest. Very, very strange. So Virgil is going on and, you know, being more and more successful and clicking all the dots, all the boxes that a black designer and black creative should click more than anyone ever. He's basically like Michael Jordan. You know, he is the Michael Jordan of fashion, literally. Uh, he's clicking all of these dots and he gets the deal to be the head of men's design at Louis Vuitton, which is, you know, aside from Hermes, is one of the most prestigious jobs in the world. And he goes in and the prop. Do you think but do you think Kanye was always kind of envious that Virgil was able to play the game more than him? Do you think so? Because Virgil clearly was able to play the game. Like you look at it as an example, like that famous video clip of Virgil and uh, I think it's Colette signing stuff, and then ASAP Bari and Ian Connor and few of us London fighting behind him, literally fighting, and he's still signing stuff. It's like maybe the clearest example of just him being about his business. 
you know, being professional, always turning up, always, you know, always attending, always showing up, always being accessible, always doing the work, blah, 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 blah. And he was just able to maneuver a little bit easier in the corporate environment or in that kind of brand environment with other professionals. And for whatever reason, Kanye just can't do it. He wants to work with these people. He wants them to help him in manufacturing. Once he gets into deals with them, he quickly realizes that it's just not for him. Everything in his body just starts to shake and then he goes on these crazy tirades in an effort to get people far away from him so he can kind of be on his own again. I wonder if that's the thing. So he might be both envious that Virgil could do it and also pissed off at himself that he can't do it. Product is selling. Uh, Virgil was the, actually the third person to die of cancer in that organization. Uh, so not just black men have passed in that organization, uh, but the third person to die of cancer that was in a higher up position in that organization. Basically, trying to ascribe conspiracy theories to your friend passing away is that just a form of grief? Is that him basically coming to, is that one of the stages of grief that he's kind of currently on, this kind of weird conspiracy theory thing that he's going for, that he still hasn't maybe accepted the fact that his friend was just, it's unfortunate, the passing, and also he wasted maybe a lot of time not maybe making up with him and making things right before he passed. Maybe that's the thing. Because that's such a bizarre thing to do. Yes, your friend, isn't it? Like, why are you ascribing flipping conspiracy theories? Like, huh? And with... Paris is a different level of elitism and racism. And Virgil was the kind of guy that uh, he didn't hold it in. And I believe it ate him up from inside. And How old was he? 40, early 40s. Huh. Uh, <laughs> and they were like, what you mean you're his best friend? You don't know the exact age, but I don't know the date. <laughs> You know, he's a young. Oh, well, that is a good point, though. If you are his supposed to best friend, you should know what date. You should know how old he is. Maybe you don't know his fucking birthday, but you should know how old he is to the number. You know, like early forties. But again, that goes to showing it. Just classic narcissism, isn't it? If it doesn't, if it's not about him, it doesn't matter. Young man. Yeah, he's a young man. So, uh, so he um, uh. The level of racism, elitism, and pressure that he was under, I'm sure affected his health. And then at that point, also me and Virgil had a rivalry because he had taken my place in fashion. He now was Drake to the radio of what he was to fashion. And we had a strained relationship also. But the people I've spent the most time with in my life is my mom, Second, Kim. Third, Virgil. We've lost all three of them in, you know, in some way mm. at this point. Um, so. I'm sorry, but having a rivalry with your best friend is just not normal. No matter what anyone says, it's not normal. And I'm assuming it was mostly a rivalry that was born from Kanye's side of things because he was the one that was maybe more cut up and annoyed, but he probably should have have every reason to be because Virgil basically got those his dream job. He called himself the Louis Vuitton Don. He did a pretty decent collaboration with Louis Vuitton the first time around. Probably thought that would be the first step to kind of maybe getting pally pally with them and then they kind of chose another person, his protege, to kind of work with instead. It could maybe be a bit gut-wrenching. It's like them overlooking you and then basically hiring your intern. Not not that deep because Virgil wasn't an intern, but still, you know, I get why he was upset. But that's the kind of thing where you're allowed to be upset maybe for a couple of days, maybe for a week at most. Then you're meant to do everything in your power to support your friend. You're meant to be at the front row. You're meant to be offering to help them flying people over to help them lending them their resources that's what it should really be because may in the end if that person wins you also win because you're their friend because you exist in the same space you you've got a close bond when people people seeing you together would maybe kind of cement that sort of stuff so it didn't it, it's just something that i don't really ever understand how that can make sense in his head like that was just a normal thing we should be rivals and also allowing the industry to kind of play you off each other as well is also kind of weird and lame, especially considering what they had to both go through together at the time because they were both kind of, you know, basically going through the ringer of flipping Paris fashion industry at the same time. So 
to kind of adopt this kind of like, oh, he's one of them sort of thing. When you know he's not, when you know that's your boy, when you know you've kind of had to share sandwiches and shit and whatnot. That's the gross part of it, I think so. I felt with Bernard know not only did he pull on the deal that contributed to me breaking down uh, and go back on his word with that, um, he also went on to hire multiple people out of my organization. This whole Bernard I know caused me to have a breakdown thing is weird, like victim stuff. Because, you know, one minute he's saying he's the strongest ever mindset wise. I don't have a breakdown, I had a breakthrough. Next minute you're accusing this little scrawny white dude that owns, you know, one of the biggest flashing house conglomerates in the world of like flipping, you know, causing you to go straight to the, causing you to go to the brink of a breakdown is really, really bizarre. Like strange, strange, strange. And then this last point he making about, oh, they poached all my talents, like, don't you want you hire some of the best people in the industry isn't that maybe like a sign that you have a good eye for talent also like what do you want you want them to stay by your side forever and not make money and stuff and not prosper their career like it's very strange and it kind of feels like the type of place where if you did quit depending on what mood he was in he, he's one of those bosses to be like yeah i don't ever want to see you here again don't text anyone on the team like you're basically dead to us kind of thing I mean, it's not really ever that serious but anyway that was the whole interview I'm not going to play any more of it because it's again like I said it's just a bit of a bummer because you know I was quite invested in them as people and as a relationship together from afar and to see what it's kind of you know just devolved into especially post Virgil's death has been pretty sad to be honest really bad way to honour his legacy especially on the first anniversary of his fucking passing it's quite horrible but you know what are you going to do what you going to do